Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and this is the tale of the horrendous whipping of Jean Hamilton. I'm in the Ouse Valley near Bolcom in West Sussex, just north of Haywards Heath. This is the majestic Ouse Valley Viaduct, which takes the London to Brighton Railway across the River Ouse and the valley. It opened in 1841, about a hundred years after the story I am telling today. Eugene Hamilton, or Jean to his friends, was a small-scale landowner who had a few acres of meadowland on which he grazed his cattle. On the other side of the River Ouse was Squire Jeffreys. He was a bigwig, a magistrate and a member of Parliament. He enjoyed hunting foxes with hounds, and he liked nothing better than all the pageantry that went with it. Every Sunday between November and March, Jeffreys would meet with his fellow huntsmen and the other participants in the village square. And at the stroke of 11 o'clock, they would ride out to flush out a fox. Much to the annoyance of Jean Hamilton, the riders would blow their horns, the hounds would bark, and they would trespass across his fields with no respect for his pregnant cattle or his winter crops. And no matter how much he remonstrated, the squire ignored the farmer's protestations, saying that wherever the fox ran, the hunt would follow. Now, it has to be said that Hamilton was no lover of foxes. He saw them as vermin, but on the whole, they didn't interfere with the working of his farm. He had been invited to join the hunt, but he had no wish to prance about and impress the ladies in his red jacket or with his stubby hunting horn. So the day before the next scheduled hunt, he trapped and killed a fox. He hacked the fox into lumps and he stood on the edge of his land by the road and waited. He could easily track the riders from the sound of the hounds. And the moment that they came onto his land, he lobbed the meat from his bucket in front of them. The hungry hounds devoured the meat instantly, thus cheating them from their kill. The horses thundered to a stop with the squire coming forward to curse and swear at the bucket holding man. But Hamilton just looked at him and said, do what you like. Just stay off my land. This did nothing to quell the squire's hunger to hunt. And weeks went by and he continued to drive his huntsman and pack wherever he pleased, all in the name of sport. Hamilton again was angered by the total disrespect for property and livelihoods. So the night before the next hunt, he trapped and killed another fox. And then the morning of the hunt, he ripped open the carcass and dragged the animal around the fields of his property. With the remains, he threw it down an old well, covering the top with branches and twigs. Soon the huntsmen had crossed the ooze and were tearing across other farmers' fields. Well, it didn't take long before the hounds had hit upon Hamilton's full scent and they raced across his fields. But before they could stop themselves, half the pack had broken through the branches and twigs and fallen into the well. Needless to say, the squire was incandescent with rage and he raved at Hamilton, who had rushed out of his house in mock surprise to see what the fuss was about. None of this would have happened if you'd kept to your side of the river. Well, it seems that this had done the trick for Squire Jeffreys did in fact turn his pack around before they got to the lowly landowner's property. However, the huntsman jibed the squire, saying he was scared of the farmer. Jeffreys didn't take too kindly to this and said that he was not scared and the next time Hamilton stood in his way, he would show him who was king around there. He didn't have to wait too long either. The winter was wet and the land flooded, which was not good for Hamilton's cattle. So he had the laborious job of digging drainage ditches. One ran flush with a hedge adjacent to the road. He was in the process of doing this work 
when the hunt came thundering down the road, chasing a poor frightened fox. The hounds were nearly upon it, and at the very last moment the fox dived through the hedge and landed in the ditch at Hamilton's feet. Without hesitation, Hamilton took the spade and slammed it into the animal, near slicing it in two. The hounds were called off, and the squire, still on his horse, came to see what had happened. Yet again, he had been cheated of the kill. You will pay dearly for this, he seethed, and he tugged the reins and forced his horse to jump the hedge and ditch. Lashing with his whip, he thrashed at Hamilton, causing deep lacerations on his face and shoulders. Hamilton was knocked to the ground, but again and again he was horsewhipped by the squire, whose rage seemed to know no bounds. The other huntsmen had jumped the hedge and were egging him on. Again and again the lethal whip flayed out at the bleeding farmer, but somehow he managed to stagger to his feet and took refuge in a barn, shutting the doors behind him. The riders encircled it, and they beat on the roof with their fists, and it was even suggested that they burn it down with Hamilton in it. Well, that may well have happened if it not had been for the ladies of the village rushing forward to intervene. It seems that the huntsmen were coaxed away, all but the squire, who remained under a tree, waiting for Hamilton to come out. When Hamilton emerged, the squire was waiting, and he lashed at the man, and he lashed again and again, and he forced the horse to knock Hamilton to the ground, and he whipped him harder and harder. But eventually Hamilton was motionless, and the squire looked down, and he thought he had killed the man. He spat at the body, and he rode off. But Hamilton was not dead, and he managed to turn his dirt-pressed face and watch the big wig go. And then something strange happened as Jeffreys made his horse jump the hedge, for his horse had seen the ditch for the first time, and he faltered, sending the squire tumbling over its head. When Hamilton approached the ditch, it was clear the man in it would never get up. You see, the squire had fallen awkwardly, and when he landed, his neck had snapped instantly. And that is the tale of the horrendous whipping of Jean Hamilton. Like so many of these stories, of course, what happened next is lost in the mists of time. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe and join me again when I go out on another investigation or tell a story from my book on Old Sussex. Goodbye.